Screen recordings are a fantastic resource when creating step-by-step -step video tutorials or training material where you're looking to take your audiences through a step-by-step -step process. For example, here at the LumaTouch Academy, we use these to help editors navigate around the LumaFusion interface, exploring icons and getting creative on the timeline. Now, although there are many apps and tools that enable creators to record themselves narrating their footage while they're recording their screen, many producers like to work with voiceover scripts they've spent time crafting and have pre-recorded before making the visuals. This is great for tutorials as it ensures they've got everything they need to include written down in the correct order and in the tone they like, rather than trying to narrate their video off the cuff and trying to get everything they need in one perfect take. However, when recorded separately, matching the visuals of a screen recording to a voiceover can be a little tricky, where for example, the footage isn't timed correctly, or perhaps you've recorded lots of mini videos out of order and you're left with a jumpy, choppy edit. So how do we best match a screen recording to a pre-recorded voiceover? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you one workflow to do just that. It's the one I use, and you might be surprised to know it starts a long time before you hit record. First up, open your voiceover in LumaFusion and edit it down so it plays out as you need it in your final video. So for this example, I have an episode of our Tips and Tricks series, Did You Know?, where Amy's describing how she's recently been getting creative in the colour and effects editor. I've added pauses and I've adjusted the volume levels and even added some transitions in here so it sounds exactly as I want it for that final video. This takes some time, but I promise you it's worth it. The next step is to record the visuals, the screen recording to match the voiceover. The trick here is to do it while you're listening to your edited audio. This will allow you to time the visuals correctly to the voiceover and help you with the continuity of your actions on screen. So in this example here, I want to use my iPad to create a screen recording inside LumaFusion. So I'm going to export the audio file I've just been editing and airdrop it to another nearby device so I'm free to screen record here on the iPad. Start recording on your chosen device before tapping play on your audio. You then do exactly as the voiceover tells you. So here Amy is talking us through using the Taurus lens effect on a clip. So I listen and edit in line with what she's saying. There will of course be moments where it takes longer to do a process than it takes to say it. So in those situations, I simply press pause on the voiceover I carry out the action as planned, and then I hit play again when I'm ready. All the actions detailed in Amy's script are carried out in order from start to finish along with the voiceover. When I'm finished, I simply stop the recording. So now we have two files, our edited voiceover and our unedited screen recording. Of course, the last vital step is to match the two parts together in LumaFusion, so the screen recording perfectly details what our audience hears in the voiceover. The video will be invariably longer than the voiceover, so don't worry about that. You're just gonna work chronologically from start to finish and match the video to the audio as you go, cutting out any pauses in the screen recording where necessary. For the moments in this example that have taken me longer to complete an action on screen than it took Amy to say it, I isolate and either speed up the footage to match the phrase on the timeline at a rate that's still easy to follow along with, of course, or I cut the clip down and trim out any sections I can to match the audio. If I've done the opposite and moved too quick on screen, slightly skipping ahead of the audio, I simply go into overwrite mode and leave a gap on the timeline, which I then fill with a screenshot of the last frame of the previous clip for continuity. This is key, embracing continuity throughout the screen recording tutorial. People want to follow along and often learn how to do something. So footage on screen must flow neatly without jumping about, allowing audiences to easily see the entirety of the action from start to finish. Although it might be tempting to just make whatever cuts needed to fit the audio to the footage, Audiences need smooth transitions from one scene to the next to prevent that jumpy nature and visuals looking disjointed and frankly confusing to follow. Just keep chipping away at your edit, matching the visuals to the audio 
and take the time to go back and watch your content through to check for any changes in continuity where you've made a cut. Once you've run through this workflow a few times, you might even like to put your screen recording into a device frame, a PNG image of the device you've recorded your screen recording with. So just lay it on top of your video and resize the clips to fit the frame. So once you've done all that, you've cut your screen recording down, you've resized it and you're happy with how it plays out, the final step here is to ensure you're really clear where you're wanting the audience to focus on screen, especially when there's a lot going on and lots to see. To help draw attention to the action, editors can use methods such as placing arrows and graphics as a layer on top of the footage, as well as embracing keyframes to zoom in and highlight specific areas, or even adding text prompts. After a little bit of practice with this workflow, you'll be matching your screen recordings to your scripted voiceovers with ease. So do let us know how you get on in the comments below, and we'll see you right here next week for more content from the Lumatouch Academy.